Okay, today we are going to practice the technique for coil building. Uh, we're going to be rolling coils by hand. A lot of times in the classroom we'll take advantage of the hand extruder uh, and this process will allow you to do this at home. I'm going to take a small chunk of clay off my pug and I'm going to take this and I'm going to begin squeezing it, trying not to incorporate too many air pockets, just compressing the clay into itself. And I use gravity here, so I kind of just squeeze and let the clay fall out. And trying to make it as uniform as possible from end to end before we begin. This is a process, it's a slow going process. It's one of the most ancient and versatile techniques that we'll explore in pottery, giving us tremendous amount of control as we slowly navigate a particular shape. Um, I've moistened the table or the workspace where I'm working. I don't want to have it shiny or too wet so that the clay will slide and get sticky, but this extra moisture that I've put into the workstation sta will allow me to roll these coils without them uh, becoming too dried out um, as the workstation absorbs the moisture. So the process of coil building is really we want to use the whole part of our hand um, and we're going to be applying pressure as we pull and as we push. Um, we're going to do this. We always want to keep it rolling. Don't go back and forth. If we go back and forth, we're going to develop a flat spot and we really want to keep it just going back and forth. And I'm feeling the clay and I'm noticing here there's a little flat spot. So it's a little flatter here and taller here. So I'm going to put it on the tall spot, tap it down a little bit, and then just continue your coil building. And as I work this across, I'm realizing, oh, it's probably too much clay. I'll be able to make two coils out of that. And the worksheet I've provided for you here is going to give you the practice to get thin coils, thicker coils, in between coils. And of course, a tapered coil is a little more challenging. We'll get to that in the end. Um, and so I'm going to start and I'm going to try to get it smooth all the way across. As I do this, I have a nice coil that's ready to be used, and I'm going to take this and put it on top of my coil. Now I've put this a PDF version of this coil practice sheet on the Google Classroom, and I would ask that you download it and print it and practice your coils on it this week, and then take a picture of it and just simply upload it to turn in your, your uh, assignment. If you can't print for whatever reason, I understand some of you may not have a printer at home. Um, I would ask that maybe you take a scrap piece of paper and draw some uh, thick straight coils, a couple thin coils, medium coil. This one tapers here and this one's a thinner taper. So I would ask that you and write your name on it, but that would be another way of navigating this at home. So I'm gonna do another one for you. I'm gonna uh, take this other half that I just took. I'm gonna be able to make a thinner coil with this one. So really just using the whole part of my hand, you'll see it's always rolling, okay? So we don't want to go back and forth again. It's a lot more fun when we can do this at school and we have con contest to see who can make the longest coil with the same amount of clay. Um, you can be amazed at how, through compression just how thin you can get these. So this one's I'm going to demonstrate with this one, just taking it as far as I can. I'm realizing here, if I stop, I'm probably going to have enough for this coil. And I'll pinch this off. And then I'll use this and continue to thin it out. Take your time. It takes uh, practice to develop the skill to be able to get uniform coils that are always round. I'm going to take this one to the super thin one. So just noticing visually, oh, and as I do this, I'm pulling and pushing, applying pressure both directions. And as I'm working this side, you'll see the whole thing is still rolling. And that looks Pretty good. So I'm going to take this one, bring it over to my sheet, set it on top. And for this 
Next one that I'll demonstrate is the tapered coil. So we're gonna take this, our initial coil, and we're gonna make it uniform thickness all the way from one end to the other. A little slower here, so. I'm using that whole hand. Okay, so now I have a coil that is the same thickness throughout, and so I'm gonna have one end, I'm gonna establish, let's say this end is gonna be the thicker end, and this is gonna become tapered to the thin, and I'm gonna just work this one end. You'll see I'll start in the middle, and keep working it as I develop that taper, and I notice a little thicker spot, so spend a little more effort there. Let me set this a little bit. Now, keeping the work surface moist as well, you can see as I've continued to roll this coil, I'm losing moisture in my hand, but the table, uh, since it is moist to begin with, this coil is still very malleable and it can be bent and wrapped without cracking. So, I've done a good job saving that moisture. Okay, so here's my tapered coil. I'll bring this go practice sheet out so you can kind of see how it's coming along. Okay. And this one's gonna go line up here. I think probably the thickest in there. Like that. Once you get all the coils rolled out and put onto the sheet, make sure if you have one that's a little too lumpy, just redo it. Uh, take the clay that you pinched off the ends or any unused clays that you worked with today. And after you take your picture, I would take these coils and mush them into one ball and take a damp paper towel and not really wet. I'm gonna squeeze all that extra moisture out. And I wrap this around of well, these coils and all these coils combined, and I'll put that back into my bag so that I can roll coils with that again tomorrow as we begin our project next week. If you have any questions, please send me an email or just keep practicing. Feel free to make sculptures with the coils that you've rolled out in the end just to give yourself a break. You can take them and coil upon themselves. You can make little snails, whatever you want to make. Take care and be safe.